Greetings, I'm John from Two Brothers, and this is the E-Flight F-16 70mm. Now we've already reviewed this jet before, so we're not gonna do it again. That's basically it right there. You, you can pretty much just stop watching right here. Actually, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna cover how well this bird can fly as your first jet. Now, if you want something less stall prone than a Viper 70, or if you don't even know what a stall even is, the F-16 is probably the right choice for you. Docile handling characteristics coupled with a nearly unstallable airframe means that it's very beginner friendly when it comes to flying. It's got some ground handling issues to watch out for, but I am confident this could be your very first jet, assuming you've got some flying experience with a trainer. The first step to any successful flight is takeoff. If you're new to jets, don't worry, I'll be here to help guide you the entire way. And if you have any questions, hop on Discord or just ask in the comments section and I'll do my best to help you out. The F-16 has narrow wheels, so you're gonna tip the jet over and flip it upside down if you're aggressive with rudder input on the ground at speed. The rudder stick directly controls the nose wheel, just like a car with a steering wheel. Too much rudder at high speeds will cause tip overs and flips, just like a car. If you want your flights to be successful, start by throttling up smoothly, then rotate about two to three seconds after reaching full throttle. If you don't know what rotate is, it means you pull the elevator stick. The next phase of flight is to pull the gear up, keep the throttle applied, and then just fly around, man. Taking off successfully is a skill that you'll have to practice consistently to master. Now landing is another skill set entirely because what goes up must come down. You don't have to be perfect at landing this jet, but you should know some of the do's and don'ts when it comes to flying the F-16. So let's go over those now. On the list of things to do, bring the F-16 in to land with a nose-up attitude. To do this, hold the elevator stick a little bit with some throttle applied and let the drag induced by high alpha bring it in slowly. Now high alpha is shorthand for having a high angle of attack, which is the angle that the plane's wings are flowing through the relative incoming wind. In short, how much the nose is pointed up. The slower the plane goes, the higher the nose must point up to generate the lift required to keep it airborne. Flying high alpha landings is a skill that you have to master to land it without damaging it or without making huge landing rollouts. On grass, it's even more important that you master this. The slower you come in on grass, the less likely it is that the plane will bounce around and get damaged. You'll also want to learn how to get comfortable with the rudder stick because in high alpha, you're going to use it to turn the jet while you keep the nose pointed up. On the list of things not to do, don't bring this jet in flat. Specifically, I mean don't land it without holding the nose up. In order to come in flat, you need a lot of airspeed to maintain altitude, and that kind of approach leads to these situations. I'm showing these clips from other channels to make a point, not to bash the pilots. I've had my own poor landings, actually plenty of them if I'm being completely honest, and here's one from the same day that we filmed most of this video. Crash reel. It's a little bit windy. A little bit windy, yeah. Aw, it was so bendy too. It was. Now I'm going if you're flying on a windy day, like most of this video that we shot, I'm going to suggest that you put the battery further forward to increase stability. If you're flying on a calmer day, you can move it further back. The gyro does a lot of the work for you, but nothing will beat the positive stability that comes from flying nose heavier on a windy day. Trust me on this one. This jet is the perfect high alpha trainer with no bad tendencies at all. All there really is to high alpha flight with the F-16 is pulling the elevator stick back, feed in throttle, then steer with rudder. The wings are resistant to stalling, losing lift in other words, so you can really keep that stick pegged in calm air. The key to high alpha flying, or really any kind of flying at all, 
is watching what the plane is doing and reacting to it. If the nose begins to drop but you have throttle applied, keep the elevator pulled and add more throttle. The jet can stall, but it's so gentle that it's easy to throttle out of. You're not going to find a lot of jets that let you get away with this, but that's why this jet makes such a great trainer, and those stall characteristics are why it's a great choice for a first jet too. Because maybe you want something that isn't as bitey as a Viper, but it's still fun to fly and it looks cool too. Now that you have an idea of how to perform high alpha, you can use the stick technique that you're seeing here to land this jet very easily. Now I'm flying on a super windy day, so it's actually much easier than it seems, but as you can see, even on a windy day, it's not too difficult to perform. You control the descent rate with throttle until the jet touches down gently on the main wheels, or as gently as you can manage. Don't feel bad if you still make mistakes, I occasionally still have hard landings myself, sometimes. Flying is a skill that you master over time, no matter how long you've been flying, because we're all prone to mistakes at one point or another. The best way to improve your piloting and to ensure that you have a jet that you'll love for a long time is to fly non-stop touch and goes, to push yourself to spend a few minutes doing nothing but taking the landing advice that I'm giving, and I'm absolutely certain that not only will you improve as a pilot, you also build the skills to fly even bigger and better airframes. Or maybe you'll just enjoy this one for what it is, if that's more to your liking. There's nothing wrong with that after all. There's a whole bunch of aerobatics that you can do with this jet too, and mastering them will make you an even more confident pilot who will be prepared to take on bigger and better airframes. Or again, perhaps you'll just keep this one around because it's a ton of fun to fly and it's very forgiving. I hope the on-screen display showing my transmitter view is helpful. I've made other tutorials in the past for learning how to fly, which you can check out in our tutorials playlist linked in the comment section below. I worked pretty hard on getting these tutorials up over the years, so hopefully you'll find them useful in your own journey of flight. Everyone has different ways of approaching flying, and I'm always happy to help if I can. If a specific maneuver that you've seen in this video is difficult, or if you're hung up on anything else, please do consider joining us on Discord to ask for help. Or join up just to share your own RC flying adventures with us. We have an awesome community, and we'd love to have you be part of it with us. Thanks for watching, and let us know what you think in the comments. Cheers!